tonight was one of those games that it was pretty obvious there was hard to find flow early on inside of the game, and, and our movement got better. Uh, our defense was pretty solid throughout, but then the movement really picked up and we gained some more confidence, and our guys continued to play at a high level in 62 deflections. So uh, I'm proud of the way they played, especially with the adversity of having a couple guys out and then a key guy like Verdell going out during the game. And uh, uh, we, we really needed people like Matt Roth and Austin Etherington to step their play up tonight. I think they did. And uh, we got our, our, our starters were very good. It was, it was tough to play without Riddell, but there again, Matt came right in and, and it was next man up and he did an excellent job with that. So, um, and all in all, to, to, to be at this point, uh, to be 12 and 0, I don't think anyone could have seen that coming. I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I saw it coming. I think to, to have, don't spend much time thinking about last season, but to have the, the same number of victories on December 22nd that we had all of last year, I think the players deserve a ton of uh, credit for what they have done with that. And uh, um, we just want to keep getting better. We really do. We just we want to keep improving. Uh, as I said to them, there's a big difference between catching your breath and taking a breath. As they go home right now, I want them to catch their breath but keep their eyes and, and their focus on, on what's ahead. and not take a breath to the point where they just kind of relax and, and uh, move on to the, to the next thing in life. I want them to enjoy their families, enjoy Christmas, uh, be in church, do the things that, that, that they need to do at home, but at the same time keep in their mind uh, what they're capable of. And, and as they come back on the 26th, be ready to, to roll at a high level. And, and we're excited about that. But I think that uh, the way that they are playing, the way that these guys are working, Leads, leads me to believe, leads all of us to believe inside of our program that, that there's a lot of progress that can still be made. And at the same time, there's guys that want to make progress. And uh, uh, where we want to go as a, as a team, where we want to go as a program, there's still a long way out there. But the way that they're working gives us a chance <coughs> to continue to move towards that. Do you have any kind of sense about uh, with Will and Verdell being long-term issues? Uh, those are day-to-day -day situations right now. What is Verdell's injury? What have you heard, I guess, you're uh, uh, it's, it's, I haven't had a chance to really sit and talk to the doctors as much right now, but, but uh, he was moving around a little bit better. But uh, I think he injured his hip. So probably more of a hip flexor than anything else. Coach, when a guy like Roth gets it going off the bench for, for you, how, how key is that in a game? Oh, it's big. Game? It's big because, because he's a veteran and uh, it was great to see him do that. It's great to see him go into uh, this break and into the next wave of the season uh, with confidence because we're going to need him. There's no doubt about it. And, and he was ready when his number was called, and, and his teammates found him, and he did an excellent job. And it, I thought he did a good job defensively as well. What does it say about the team that that lead was, I think, 20, then it went down to 10, and then they took off? Uh, I think it says that, that um, uh, uh, they continue to create their own energy. Our guys continued to create their own uh, fire tonight, and uh, they kept moving at, at, at a high level. I thought they did an excellent job uh, of building this lead with their defense, with the break, even when we became a little stagnant offensively. And uh, then, our, then our whole mindset became, let's just get more movement on offense and look for the openings that are there. We always felt there were certain things that were open from the film, and they were the same things that were open in the game. We are just having a little harder time getting to them. We've heard opposing teams this non-conference season talk about picking their poison defensively against you guys, but when you guys see a 2-3 zone with the guys that you have shooting the ball, that's got to be a, a game. <coughs> oh, no question, because I, I think that uh, I don't know what their game plan was, but it looked very much like they wanted to pack the lane and make it tougher on Cody, and, and we've got to continue to get Cody where he's comfortable being away from the rim looking for a shot, and I think we will. But yeah, that, that's a great way to think about that and our guys did an excellent job once the ball started moving better and we wanted to treat the zone like it wasn't a zone. I mean just get better ball movement and, and, and get more uh, penetration, more kickouts and our guys did an excellent job of finding one another. I think 19 assists in a game uh, that had its ups and downs offensively is pretty strong. On the significance of obviously the streak is over now of, of Jordy's 58 in a row free throw shoot. Well, I think that it says, first off, as, as Bob said in the back, he's never heard a crowd cheer like that for somebody that missed a shot. I think it goes to show how 
uh, knowledgeable and how passionate our fan base is about these guys when, when they acknowledge the fact that what he did was pretty remarkable. I mean, really remarkable. And the all-time Big Ten record, you yes. said, right? I mean, that's, and in top ten all-time, that's all big time. time. That's big time. And I, and I think that bothered him a little bit, you know, that he, that he missed that free throw because he's such a perfectionist. And I think it showed in his play a little bit, but I thought he came back in the second half and he played like a true veteran, a true leader, and continued to, to uh, find his teammates. He even passed up some shots that, that, I, that we wish he wouldn't have. But he was really focused on making this about his teammates after something that's very important to him, you know, went away. But he started a new streak. So I, I think it's... Uh, I think it, it's awesome that uh, he has done that over this period of time. And, and the thing I said to him, now for you to go up above and beyond that record, you're going to have to get fouled yourself more a few times. And, uh, and I think that he will. What you, Austin, defensively, what did you think how he did? Well, I watched the film, and I thought he did some good things. And I think it was really important that he come out with some toughness and grit. And I thought he did that because that's what the next wave is going to really be about keeping the dribble in front of him, being a better helper. And we played a lot of different lineups, uh, especially after Verdell went out, and, you know, different mix and matches. So some of the things that we had prepared for yesterday, even after Will got hurt, you know, we didn't really have that. So there was a lot of mix and match on the fly, and I thought he did a good job, and his teammates did a good job of holding him accountable, you know, helping him through a couple of situations. And uh, it was good for him, very good for him. Can you speak to the mentality of the players shooting the ball? I think it was only 2 of 14 from 3 in the first half. They were getting open looks that weren't going down. And the fact that they just kept shooting and eventually got them to go? Well, yeah, I mean, we didn't say anything about the shooting. I mean, we, I'm not worried about that whatsoever in the sense, as long as we're taking good shots. And you, you made a good point. Those were good shots. They were open shots. They just didn't go a couple of times. But uh, <coughs> it's just a matter of time for our guys, I think, before the shots are going to go because there's – uh, so many of them that can make them, and, and they work so hard at it. And it was great to see Christian get hot like that. It was great to see Matt get hot like that. But they were shots that all, all that were all created off action, all created off penetration, all created off the next pass. And I think that's when we're at our best. And inside out can not only come from the post, but inside out can come from penetration into the lane. And uh, that's what we started doing more of as the game went on. You've talked in the past about when Matt starts hitting, it gets everybody else going, and it gets everybody else juiced up. Is that was this tonight another kind of example of that that people still, everyone else kind of still feeds off? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think our guys feed off each. I think in the past, when we didn't have a lot of things to hang our hat on too offensively, I think it was more so. But our guys love Matt, and and uh, he's been through so much, and 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 they love seeing him get, to get, you know, get hot like that. But I think they feed off a lot of different things. I think they feed off seeing guys be successful because they know they're scoring a lot of points because that ball's moving and they're defending well. And, and it, it's, it's no accident that our points per game is way up because though because our assists, and even when our assists don't go, the, the, the ball movement, which lead to potential assists, and the fact that we're creating so many more turnovers. So I think they feed off a lot of different things. And I think the biggest thing is that they like each other. And, and I think... Uh, uh, it's really hard right now to come into practice or, or come into a game and not bring tremendous energy and tremendous unselfishness because I think you'd stand out like a sore thumb and I don't think anybody wants to do that. Is it almost a positive in a game like this that they, you had to grind it a little bit earlier and then were able to fight through that? Mm, I don't know. But I mean, you, you, want, you want to be fluid in everything that you do, but uh, there was no way that this was going to be... Um, just another night uh, at the office when you have injuries to two guys that I consider starters. I mean, things are going to change, and, and, and rhythm is going to change, and who's in when is going to change. So I think they did a good job with that, and I was really pleased with the way they played after Verdell went down. And, and uh, because they love Verdell, you know, I mean, they, they don't want to see him hurt. And, uh, uh, but they just continued to step up. And that's a night, in the answer to Dustin's question, where Matt really picked up the slack, and I think it did energize our team at a good level because he was making shots. But um, it, you know what? When you, when, you, when you play games and you're winning games, the more different way that, it's, that you can look at it and say, okay, we won it this way, we've been through this, we've been through that. Remember when we had to go through this stretch? Remember this game? I think that's good for him. So in the whole scheme of things, it's good. And... In, in, uh, Again, I don't think where they're at right now can be taken lightly or should ever be taken lightly based on what they've done, based on, on uh, 
you know, the way our students have gone the last couple of years. So I'm just proud of the way they keep getting better, the way they want to keep getting better. You talked about Burdell early on, but can you give us any kind of an update on Will? No, it's really going to be day to day. I mean, he, he, there was some progress made today, but uh, uh, it, it's it, it's it's very much that just waiting for swelling to go down, and and uh, it, it it truly will be that kind of situation. I don't I don't think it's uh, anything that's going to be long term, but I don't think to to put a to put a, a date on it or a timeline on it. We're not there yet, but because the doctors and, and Tim aren't there yet. And do you anticipate uh, Derek having to wear a, a face mask? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's already in. He wanted to paint it. I think he was. Uh, he, had, he had some ideas. And we shut that down real fast. <laughs> we made sure during the game he was doing his rehab on his nose, stretching his nose now and again. But Derek is a real treat. So he's he is a real treat. But uh, no, that'll be just a regular uh, plastic uh, face mask with. With, he's not painting it like a hockey goalie. I know that. What were some of his suggestions? Oh no, this is this is a this is a G-rated place. <laughs> no, he's, he's he's just he's 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 at a different level. I, I would I wouldn't have understood it. It's some character, some movie, or something from *Tour <coughs> Duty*. I don't know. We're not doing it. <laughs> Coach Jordan talked about next game up or one game at a time. How often do you and the coaches have a look at the Big Ten scout or the non-conference part? Um, not as much as you think. Yeah, definitely when we when we have common opponents, but but we've definitely I mean worked this week ahead on Michigan State, and I'm sure I'm sure one of the coaches has already had on Ohio State, and I'll definitely look at that. I mean I already have, so I mean and, and look at that over the next couple of days. So you're always trying to be, uh, you want to have a working knowledge, I think more than anything else, and then now we'll see each other a lot, you know, see see all the different teams a lot because we're going to be playing each other, but. We've really done a great job of not getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, we didn't even uh, put Michigan State things in or anything like that to prepare for this game. I thought about it, but we didn't. We've really stayed true to the, the next game, one game at a time, you know, staying in the present. And I think it's important to do that as coaches, but we're always working ahead. So that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of our rule of thumb, you know, basically. What's your thoughts on the Big Ten this year? I don't really have many yet. So I, I really don't. I mean, it, it, uh, it's obviously extremely competitive. I don't think there's any question about that. But I see different coaches, you know, predicting, okay, anybody could go from second to seven. or eight. I, don't, I don't have that kind of knowledge yet. So I haven't really spent much time on that. With the Big Ten, as close to it, as it is, how important is it to get contributions from your eighth, ninth, tenth guys? Well, it's extremely important. And, 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 and right now, tonight, we had to deal with injuries you know, in a, in a big-time way. And... and uh, uh, as I've always said, and, and this year, it's no different. We are not a team that could withstand a lot of injuries. I mean, we're just not. We're, we're not that deep yet. And again, we have some, some good players and some guys that are getting better, but, but deep means that there's not much of a drop-off when you go to the bench. And, and, and uh, we've got to continue to develop that. And uh, I do know enough about the Big Ten and what's returning, that there are some deeper teams than others. I don't know it, like I'll know it in a couple weeks, but but uh, when I think of us and if I think of the Big Ten that way, I don't see us in that light yet. But that just means we've got to keep working at it. Do you think that this team is maybe mentally better equipped to handle injuries and things with, with more veteran guys, guys that are more vocal as leaders, things like that? Mm, that, that remains to be seen because, because uh, again, this was a week where where we weren't challenged like we're going to be, obviously. And so uh, what you do is you give guys some experience. They get, they get the games under their belt. They have some success. Like, like Matt has said, I thought Austin's put together a couple of good nights. Remy's done some good things. And uh, the last play at the end, that was all on me. I wanted him to break it down and get all the way to the rim, and, and uh, uh, even though it wasn't a great play. But he's got there, – there's so much room for growth, you know, whether it's – fundamentals, whether it's seeing the whole court, whether it's post-feeding, whether it's screening, I mean, there's so much room for it. So with that being said, we've got some guys that are pretty good at those things. We've got some guys that, that, that don't have all the details of the game down, and I think that's got as much to do with depth and being deep as anything else. Speaking of Remy, first guy off the bench, he shot 10 free throws, led the team. You just talked about Did he really shoot 10 free throws, huh? Uh, Remy, Remy's got, he's, he's got a unique ability to get to the basket. 
the next step for him is really being able to see the next play and, and, and really drive with his head up and uh, come off pick and rolls with his head up. He's got strong legs. We want him to go to the basket. We want him to penetrate. I think the next way for him is to find that open man because, because he does draw a bit of a crowd right now because of his ability to get to the basket. So that's a big step and then becoming an even better on and off the ball defender. But, he, but he's willing and he's working very hard at it and I have no reason to believe that he won't. What did Will do to get hurt? What yeah, actually, it was in a scrimmage situation. It was about, I don't even know if it was, we didn't practice that long yesterday. I don't know if it was really even at the three-quarter mark, but we were scrimmaging and he basically stepped on a basketball. The basketball was loose in, in, in the scrimmage and he stepped on it and, and, and it just rolled on him. So, it's kind of a freak play, Anybody which else? most injuries usually are. Anybody else? All right. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Thanks.